Welcome to Q&A with Che. Um, looking forward to a really exciting episode today. My guest today is the one and only legendary producer, songwriter, artist, entrepreneur, world traveler, FKI First. We're going to get into shit, how he got his name. We're going to get into his family. We're going to get to his inspiration. We're going to get into how he started. We're going to get into his journey. We're going to get into where he's at now and what he's doing and what's next. We're going to get into world domination as he's on his way to being the world's number one artist. Q&A with Che. Stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe on the Himalaya app. We lit. Shout out to my man FKI first in the building. Um, welcome to another episode of Q&A with Che. I'm your host, Che Pope, the one and only, the Grammy winner, the executive, multi-platinum producer. I'm going to stop talking shit about myself. <laughs> Let me introduce another multi, multi-platinum producer, artist. Let me put that in big words, artist, because artist. he was an artist, actually, before he was a producer. And I'm happy to have on the show today the one and only FKI First. What's up with you, my dog? What's hey. good with you? What's good with you? Man, everything. Everything moving smooth, man. I'm going with the flow of life, bro. Yeah, it's good to see you. Going you know with the man? flow of life. I'm good to see you, too. World traveler, but we'll get into that in a minute. Um, and I know you probably answered this question a thousand times, but I just got to ask it because it's one of those questions. Where'd you get your name from? The name. My name is first. I got my name because I'm a twin. Okay. And I was born first. Oh, there first. you go. First. Yeah, man. I'm a... <laughs> <coughs> yeah, the um, name first. Yeah, I'm I'm a twin, and I was born first. I'm the oldest out of okay out of two of us. Yeah. Does your twin do music? Nah, she doesn't do music. Oh, okay. She's like, she's like the book smart side, and I'm like the wilder one. Like, okay, so she's yeah. the book, yeah, the creative. So yeah, one, one side, yeah, of the brain. I'm I forget the, which creative side is the brain. Yeah, yeah I'm the creative. One. She's yeah. the book. She's the book That's smart. Yeah. Hold on, let me get to my little questions. I got my little cheat sheet. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, but that way I'm prepared. Um, I know this because we've talked before and you've told me about this, but I want to talk about it before we get into everything. Um, tell me about your heritage. Well, my heritage, well, my dad is Liberian, straight from Liberia. He came here. He was the first person from from the family to actually come to America. Okay. So, yeah, he moved, he moved from Liberia, Monrovia, Liberia, to Cincinnati, Ohio, and from Cincinnati, Ohio, to Atlanta. To Atlanta. And that's the beginning. That's the, and that's the beginning of me. Okay. And was you born in Ohio or Atlanta? Um, yeah, born in Ohio, and right when I was born, we moved to Atlanta. Okay. And I was there the rest of the time. Oh, so you really straight at ATL. Yeah, literally been there the whole time, so that's all in there. But um, I was about to say, um, yeah, I got, like, the best of both A's, bro. For real, that's how I look at it. Really? Like, West Africa and Atlanta, I feel like those two places are, like, so special when it comes to music and just vibes and everything. So yeah, that's I get the, the best of both A's, bro. Yeah, you get the, the crazy rhythms, mm -hmm. the rhythms from both. All right, so um, how did you, you know, Atlanta, We, you know, I, I had a house in Atlanta for a little bit, so I know about Atlanta early on. It was real clicky. And so you growing up in Atlanta... How did you, it's such a saturated music market. Don't get me wrong, it's a lively music market. Mm -hmm. And it's popping, you know, everybody popping, but it's very clicky. How did you How did you get into that click, or how did you get on in Atlanta? The beginning for me in Atlanta is, um, I feel like, it was there was a dude named Mr. Hanky Ooh, and okay. Mr. Collar Park. I don't know if y'all know who that, Mr. Collar Park is the reason he... Early 90s, all the music in Atlanta, he was definitely yeah, a part of it. Producing it, part. DJing, making all of that. And Mr. Hanky, same thing. He he came up under uh, DJ Collar, Mr. Collar Part 2. Oh, funny thing about Mr. Hanky, he actually just produced that song for... Uh, I'm living my best life. I ain't going oh, that's back. Song? Yeah, 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 my nigga came back. Yeah, yeah he came back yeah, with another Snoop one. Joint. The Snoop yeah. with the comedian joint. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, man. Mr. Collar Park and Mr. Hanky, bro, they literally put me on. They had me on, like, like making beats and just. I was just. I used to play them my songs and shit. I'm like, man, I, I was just you trying just, to learn. I was just trying just, to figure out any way to get in the studio. Yeah, how'd you meet him? 
Um, I met them through. I I met Mr. Collar Park and Mr. Hankey through Charlie actually, and CEO Charlie. Oh, I still call him CEO Charlie. Um, just Charlie Rocket. I mean Charlie okay. Rocket. I don't know if you heard of him. He's a He's a, he he inspires people now. This shit is, gotcha. a, is fucking amazing. We both inspired each other to do shit. But he actually linked me with Mr. Hankey and Mr. Kyle Park. He was like, yo, you need to meet these dudes, bro. I mean, I always knew who they were, but he put us face to face with each other and they just had me working. I wasn't even okay. good. Yeah. I didn't even have talent. I mean, I had talent, but I guess they just saw something in me, bro. But I, that was the beginning. So those are the first people that like. Yeah, that's like, dope. Because sometimes it's just you see some, you know, you just see a work ethic in somebody, you know what I mean? And you want to support mm-hmm. that. I mean, the moral to that story right there is networking. You know what I mean? You beat everybody. You got a network, and then when you got on, you put you you went to work. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, did you start as an artist, a producer, or an engineer? Man, or I literally everything. I literally started as an artist, and then I didn't have beats, so I had to figure out how to make the beats. And there was nobody to record me, so I had to figure out how to record myself. So it was literally that's that was that was it. Oh, so purely out of necessity. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's similar to in my situation. I had to learn the reason I, I know computers and technology is the same thing. I came to the session one day and the engineer couldn't show up. Um and I didn't know how to run Pro Tools and no one else knew how to run Pro Tools. This is early. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. older than you, so you know, this is the beginning stages yeah. of Pro Tools. There was only a few people in the damn city that could run right, it. Right, right, right. So I taught I learned I had to learn Pro Tools. So right. yeah, that's dope. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's fast forward a little bit. Now you're on, your beats are getting better, you get getting nice. How do you, what's the next move? What's the, how do, what do you feel like is is the step? Let's let's not fast forward to White Iverson yet. What's the steps in between that that, that happened for you? Steps in between that? Um, before the rocket ship. Before the rocket ship. Um, I was actually still, at that time, I was at that time. I was sh- still rapping. Like I still wanted to be the biggest rapper, like of all time. Like, but I was extra broke, <laughs> which, not, is, not, which not just, is a part of it. Yeah, but I was broke, just like extra broke. Extra, I was just extra broke. Like I didn't have nowhere to really sleep or eat. So so it's like fuck. I gotta figure out how to get some money. So I used to fucking um. Hold on, where are we at right now? Wait, I'm still yeah, I'm in Atlanta right now. You're in right Atlanta after right Mr. Hankey, Mr. Kyler Park. Yeah, you're starting to get nice. Your production. I, I was starting to get nice. Travis Porter. Um, oh yeah, I met these three dudes from the east side. Okay. These three kids from the east side. They was young as fuck. They had some songs in Atlanta going crazy. And I know they was like always on the road. Like all the high school kids knew them. Like okay. knew these three so kids. So they was popping. Porter. They knew all yeah, they, they just knew them. And um uh, Mr. Hanky was making a song with him. He's like, "Yo, bro, help me, uh, help me mix this song or whatever." I'm like, "I, I don't really know what I'm doing fully, but I'm gonna act like it." <laughs> so I helped him. He, he was fake like, "It sounds good." It. Yeah, fake it till you make it. So then, um, like the next day, I went to the studio with them, and like the first week, I would I would always bring a keyboard to the studio, and shit. I would always bring a keyboard and like kind of tell them about my songs. They was like, "Whatever," but um, one day they was like, "Bro, why don't you do something with that fucking keyboard, bro? You don't never fucking do it." And they told me to make a beat, and we made this song called Make It Rain and shit. Make It Rain and Bring It Back. We made those the days after each other. Make okay. It Rain, Bring It Back, and Hey Ladies, all and that, those. And that was the start. Same week, and those were everything. That was the start. Yeah. And yeah. I, I ain't going to lie. I, you know how you, you know how a person has, like, like in their head, they have they know, they think they think they know how their career is going to be? Mm-hmm. Like, I never <laughs> thought it would be like that. In my head, I thought I was going to be, like, just making beats for just like, like Jay Z was gonna call me like, hey bro, pull up to New York real quick. I got these beats. I got. All, I mean, I need some beats this day. I need that. That. That's how. That's how I saw it in my head. And which is, it's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with this. But like, we just made like three big hits, and one of those songs still playing the club like to this day. Still like, go. To this, that was just crazy. Yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't even thinking of that at all. Like, yeah, that's crazy how it happens, though, right? Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. You just, how you it just make some shit out of nothing one day, and next thing yeah. you know, you're in the club, and like this shit going wild. Yeah, bro. That's some real shit, right? When you, yeah, yeah, man. So, with that said, um, and for those of you who've been under a rock somewhere and don't know who this guy is and don't really understand who this is, um, this is the guy who birthed Post Malone. 
You know, I'm never one to like say someone took credit for this, you know, and all that and someone's career and this and that, but he really helped mold and shape the career that you, you know, the superstar that you know is Post Malone. So let's get into that real quick before we go into, because now I want to discuss what you're doing now, because I think what you're doing and your business acumen, whether you realize it or not, is really powerful. So let's briefly touch on that because that's just a part of you. Hey. So, yeah, okay. that's just a small, that's, that's a small part. I told yeah. you, it's layers, bro. Exactly. Layers, you got to just keep peeling, keep yep. peeling. So, real, like, yeah. so, real quick, we won't even go into this long. You meet this guy, this kid from Texas. So that's where he's from, right? Yeah. Yeah. Dallas. Okay. And then how does that happen? Once again, I'm minding my business, just making songs, just doing what you do, kicking it with my friend. And um, he was like, yo, I know this kid that uh, that raps, bro. You want to make a song with him tonight? I'm like, all right, I guess, whatever. <laughs> bro, pull up. He pull up with the, I think, like a yellow Yankees jersey or whatever. He pulls up. I'm like, all right, he dressed kind of cool, I guess. Um, He was just, like, rapping, like, dead ass, like, rapping. <laughs> like, straight rap. <laughs> like, rapping. And it was hard, too. That yeah. shit was fire. He was so like, like, okay. Yeah, it was, it was hard. I'm like, eh, yeah, white boy, fire. So then... um. This is in Atlanta. No, this is this is in this is in LA. I oh, randomly okay. came to LA. I don't know what I was doing out here. Were you living in LA at the time? Nah, I no no no. I just yeah, nah, I just got here. I was I was still still straight Atlanta. I don't know why I was here. I was out here kicking it, bro. <laughs> and I ended up going to to the just studio. Out here getting money. Yeah, yeah. I just I just pulled up with my friend and he told this kid to pull up. But that okay. wasn't it though. We made a couple of songs. I'm like, all right, he's pretty cool. I started that whole week. I'm like, I started pulling up on him. We were linking, mm-hmm. we were linking. And then by the time I was leaving, he was like, bro, you should move out here. Like, you should just move out here, bro. Move into my room, bro. I just, I move, I sleep in the closet. And I'm like, shit, all right. All right. All right, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, LA fire as fuck. I had just got, I had just got arrested for some dumb shit in Atlanta too, for some weed shit. Yeah, so you like, so I was like, let me get the fuck out of here, bro. Like, for real, let me get the fuck out of here, bro. So I came out here. And um, yeah, change the scenery. And I, yeah, change the scenery. Everything change, change the vibes. And I just moved in, and we were cooking up. I had everybody pulling up. I had um, and this is just at the crib. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, yeah, this is at the crib. I remember Bankroll Fresh pulled up. Wow. Shout I'm gonna introduce Bankroll Fresh to uh, yeah. Post. Shout out to Bankroll. Yeah, it's crazy. Me and Post actually, Post actually, Post made beats too. Post made a beat for Bankroll Fresh. It's pretty okay. hard. Yeah, yeah. Um, Bankroll Fresh pulled up. I remember Gunplay from MMG. Yeah, Gunplay. Lil Dicky wow. before he popped, before yeah. that. He just put By the way, Lil Dicky got some game. I play ball with Lil Dicky. He got some game. Oh, yeah, bro, him. nice, bro, yeah. nice. It was who, a lot of people, just random people pulling up, kicking it with us, and like, and but, but we were still making rap songs. Yeah. This is before. We're still making rap yeah. songs. And they didn't really before, know. really. Yeah, they didn't know who he really was. On. Yeah, no one yeah. knows who he is. A few people know you. Mm-hmm. There's a few people, yeah. Yeah. And, um... So then, all right, fast forward. Let me move this, move this quick. His dad, uh, Post's dad, just happened to come into town. And his dad is cool as fuck. That's my dog. Okay. So we chilling or whatever in the kitchen. It's just me and him. He was like, yo, you know Post can sing, right? You know you, you know Austin can sing, right? I'm like, I guess I kind of heard him. I didn't even know. But then he showed me this video of him performing in front of like 12 people at like some fair or something. <laughs> I don't even know. And I'm like, damn, he can sing, bro. He can sing. So after that, I'm like, oh, shit, fuck all that. We about to make yeah. some singing songs, bro. Some ladies pulled up, you know, one braided his hair. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess he was feeling himself after that. <laughs> Literally the next day, he had started a song. It wasn't it wasn't done yet. He had started something. And I'm like, dog, this shit hard as fuck, bro. Like, whoa, this shit hard. And it was White Iverson. And then we just, we wow. just jumped on, th- threw sauce on that bitch, turned it all the way up. But... We knew though. We didn't know how big, but we knew. We was like, yo, this shit is hard, bro. Like, what the fuck? It was the feeling. Like, it was just like, yeah, you know, right? Like, people was walking just... past the room. Everybody just be like, yo, what the fuck? And we, and that yeah. shit was on loop. When I tell you on loop, yeah, looped. Bro. I always feel like when you got one, you you got that shit one, you was loop, bro. We just listened to it over and over and That's over and fire. over and over and over. Everybody. Nobody complained. Yeah, little known fact, I went to college where, where Iverson is from. Mm. And I used to go to his high school games and watch him as a mm. high school student. His high school games were more lit than my college games. Crazy, <laughs> yeah. crazy, anyway, crazy, crazy. Random fact. Um, all right, so let, let's get past that. We know what I, why Iverson did. We know 
the future. But now, hold on, oh, what? Okay. With the crazy thing, we were making a, a, a um like a artist project together. Oh, okay. I wish I found this picture because I, I have the picture somewhere in my phone. But like, we're literally making um we're making like two projects. We're featuring on both on each other's projects, and it was like. The videos were gonna be able to, like yeah. one video ended, the other person's would start, you know, on some crazy shit. Yeah, so what happened? And that? um that song blew up like we didn't like I we knew it was fire at the same time, we didn't know it was gonna blow up like that. So that shit just fast uh, forwarded. So yeah, that just But um but no, I, but we just we just linked. Me and Post, we just we just linked. We we were talking about putting out those old songs. So yeah, we're probably gonna put those old songs yeah, out soon. You know, them shit's probably fire. You know, fire, yeah, 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 gotta yeah. put that out. You know, people but, yeah. need to hear that. Yeah, cause you know, you know I, I'm I got like 50 beats left. After these 50 beats gone, that's it. I'm, I told her I'm I'm about to be the biggest artist on the planet, too. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that, shit. Yeah, I, that I got 50 beats side. left, y'all. So if y'all want one of these 50 beats, y'all better come get me. Yeah, you got 50. Yeah, left. you better reach out. You better hit him on social media if you got his line. Hit his line. If you don't got his line, too bad. <laughs> All right, now let's let Iverson blows up. Da da da. Okay, now the game changes. Now now money enters the situation. You got money. You got resources. Now, what's it going through your head? Like, what's next in FKI first career? What are you thinking? You know what I mean? Like, shit is lovely, but that's that's but that's on the production side. You know, I know in your heart, oh, you're nah, an shit wasn't it was shit. Nah, shit wasn't lovely though. At the oh, same time, oh, shit, it okay. wasn't. Lo- it was like smooth. Okay. But it wasn't lovely oh, yet. All that, because you know, all the um. Now we getting into the real music business shit. Yeah, I'm about to say all that stuff wasn't handled yet. That was just, just a, that was just up in there. So oh. yeah, all that shit was so yeah. So you had to deal with the, the so yeah that was, no no really it, that shit just got done now like dig it like, oh so yeah okay <laughs> you know unfortunately I know too all that too well yeah bro that should be crazy yeah. bro so, so do you all right so what is your lesson to your younger self so what would you tell your younger self now. Now that you know what you've been through, how would you have dealt with that on with foresight? How would you have prepared for that? And the reason I'm saying that is like as a younger artist right now might be working or a younger producer might be working right now in the same situation that you were in, they might find themselves in. So how can they prepare for that or protect themselves? Just uh, just know with every situation in music, everything, like the music business, everything, it's just like starting a new relationship with a with, with whoever with, you yeah, have like woman, female whatever, yeah. it's literally starting a new relationship like a love relationship whether you like it or not or you whether you think about it like that or not it's literally like that it is I even think about that when like if people hit me up to sign to them or mm-hmm. or vice versa I'm like damn do I really want to be in this relationship. Do I really want to sleep with them like yeah. that, bro? Like, just, am I really making this like, commitment? Like, we cool. We cool. <laughs> like, you know, when we link up and we just be like, you know, it's just like casual fucking. But like, now nah, you talk about marriage and it's like. <laughs> you talk about relationship. You talking about moving in. Yeah, yeah, you know moving I mean? in. Just, that's, just remember, everything is like that. Mm-hmm. Everything. That's how I look at it. Everything is like that. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Just if, so, if I know what I know now. <laughs> right, right, right. So it's like. Definitely, definitely. You just just know that. Just 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 know it's like that. Okay. And and your person can fall in love with other people, you know? <laughs> yep. Y- you might cheat like other shit, but yeah. just think just, I'm saying all business all business though, you know what I mean? Yep. So but you gotta think like you gotta that. relate those things together. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Sometimes you need a prenup, you know, sometimes you don't. <laughs> so like yeah. prenups might be good, especially in this business. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I think smoking weed is also good. It's therapeutic, you know. Yeah, you got, you got smoke. Speaking of that, wait, should I talk? Should we? Should we? Should we? Should we, should we segue into? Uh, uh, nah, uh, I was about to talk about my. Uh, nah, I was about to talk about. I got some new weed, bro. You want to talk about it's shout out? So positive, we but could, it's not like yeah. But we could segue into good gas because it's gonna be a little good gas segment. You know, I got to talk about good gas. Is smoking bit. weed growing with alkaline, bro? Like. All natural, outdoor, good gas, real good gas. That's some other shit. Okay. Shout out to the Alkaline Weed. Okay. But that's a perfect segue. Before we get into your your, your solo stuff, I want to talk about, um, I just think it's brilliant the way you're creating these different, whether you realize that they're just different income streams, different business paths, different opportunities for artists and yourself and so on and so forth. So what was... What was the sort of the idea behind the creation of Good Gas? And can you explain what that is?
good gas. Good gas. Good gas is really. I have two side. I have two sides of me. There's me first, the artist, and then there's good gas. I look at good gas. It's like everything. Like all all my businesses in one. Okay. I don't know if I'm if I should even be telling it like this, but. <laughs> Okay, but I that's see just it. that's just that's just that's my way that's my that's my way to keep my art flowing to the people. Gotcha. Really. Cause that's I got like, like I hate even though I have so much art kept on my computer and hard drive, I don't I want to release it all to the world. I yeah. don't want to keep it. So I was just I was I always wanted to figure out a way to do that. And that's good gas. And that's good gas, and that's gonna turn into good gas films. Yeah, good gas. Is the good shit. gas, everything. Good bro. gas. We got good gas. Tokyo. He got good gas. Shit Tokyo. Up. Good gas. Good yeah. gas. Rio, Brazil. Yeah. Good Fire. gas. London. Fire. Everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. I want to. It's going to spread um, global. Before we get into this solo thing, where did where did this the love of the world come from? Like, you know what I mean. Reason I ask that, I meet so many young producers from Atlanta, all over the U.S., and they're so intimidated by the world. I talk oh, about yeah, yeah, yeah. traveling and this and that, and they're like, oh, man, the flight's eight hours or ten hours. Oh, no, I can't do that. You know, where did you get this love and fascination of the world and curiosity? Where'd that come from? My first name is, is Troco. That means earth or world. Oh. So, yeah, that shit just, that just was, in, that shit in your was, DNA. Yeah, that's just already in there, bro. That global mindset. Yep. Yeah, I think, you know, for all of those that you are scared to travel, you got to explore the world. You got to see the world. What, what, did, what did you learn... What did you feel like you learned from going to Tokyo, Brazil, or any other place you've been? What do you feel like you learned? Man, it's the people, man. It's like, people always, like, artists will always say that or something. And I'll be like, man, they're so corny. Like, I get them, but now, nah, but now, nah, it really is about the people. Like, when you meet people from other, just from other cultures, they just show you, they show, they can show you how respectful or disrespectful you are, you know what I mean? You they just put just different lights and like my niggas like some of my niggas in Atlanta, I know some some folks who would never get to leave. That's why I that's why I do travel too. Cause I, I document it all and I want them to see it. I yeah. want all my all my people to see it who can't travel or just who oh, just yeah, might not ever go yeah, there. You yeah. got it. I just want them to see to see that. I was always inspired by Pharrell and like Nigo. Yeah. So I was just like always like Fuck, man, they so cool, bro. They yeah. be everywhere making cool shit. I want to make cool shit. How do they do that? How do they do that? I just, yeah, Pharrell yeah. was one of my inspirations in terms of the travel because he was one of the first ones to really just do it. He was in Japan. Mm -hmm. He was here. He was there. I was like, oh, you know what I mean? So, and I, as a as a kid, I, same thing, I came from parents that didn't really travel like that, so I never went overseas. I didn't go overseas. I was like 27 or some shit. Yeah, you know we just mean? went to Florida and uh, and Florida, Macon, <laughs> Georgia, Savannah, Georgia, and Ohio, bro. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. So it's like now we get to see the world, man. I can't. Uh -huh. I can't get enough of it. Yeah, man. All right. Now let's get back into first the artist. So when do you recalibrate? You know, what I mean, I know the shit took off, right? So then you gotta, you know, you gotta make your money. Your producer game is taking off, but you're really an artist at heart. When do you just make? When do you decide? Okay, it's time for me to do what I do. With time to get back into artist mode. When do you when do you make that decision? Well, for people who know me, I am all. I would I would say I'm always in artist mode. Slick. I really be. I really use. I'm mad because I really used to like. This is like I'm being so serious, bro. I would literally dumb myself down for other people. I I'm like fuck. I'm about to go in with these rappers there. Some people and like I'm really saucing on all them. I'm gonna dumb it down today so we could get this song done and just do this. I am not. That shit is crazy. Hell no. Nah. I can't always do that. That's that's that. That's not good. That's so. Yeah. That's I was suppressing my my feelings. Yeah, you, you don't suppressing. hide. You don't hide your drip. You don't hide your. Drip, you don't hide yeah. your drip from the world. Hey, you listen, y'all. Don't talent. hide your drip from the world. Like for real, I used to dumb like dumb my shit down, and not in a bad way. And not in a bad way. I just yeah. mean, one. I feel like I'm psychic too. So like I feel like I could be I can hear people sometimes yeah. like especially in like studio settings or like free settings like that, and it's just like man, I, some you just don't want to out drip nobody, yeah. you know you just but, when you just was there making the song, let's just make the song, you know what I mean? They be bringing their girl to the studio, <laughs> yeah, I'll be you, fly you're as to, fuck like yeah, nah, you don't want to try to front on them. Yeah, man, yeah. you can't do that, bro. See, but now I kick it alone, so I ain't even got to worry about them things. And my partners that know me, like we we kick it together, yeah. but. 
Fuck all that, bro. The Tokyo Project and all this new music is coming out. And let me... T- yeah. For all those... For, for, for all those producers out there, for all those inspiring actors, like, please, y'all. Please, y'all. Please, y'all. Preach. Don't don't dumb shit down. Go all the way. You gotta be. You gotta go at it full full hunt like full hundred percent. I'm I'm sorry for interrupting. What's the question you about to say? I don't even go and nah, go off like, like that. But I love, about to go no, all the but way I love up. it. Like let it, yeah. Don't. I mean the message you telling them right. Don't don't dumb yourself down. Shine on these motherfuckers. Shine on these motherfuckers. Stun on these motherfuckers. You know what I mean? And I don't mean that in a negative though. way. Yeah, respect, yeah. I don't mean that in a negative way. Yeah, I, know, I mean that in a confident way. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that's that's an important lesson because I do think people dumb down in talent sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, other, and, and depending on the circumstance. Yeah. Um, at the same time, I don't know that you got to be full Kanye all the time either. You know what I mean? Gotta, oh yeah, you know, nah. Yeah. Nah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Nah. I think you know, I keep it real play. You know, I'm real cool. You know, yeah. what I mean? I'm real laid back. That's, you know, that's I'm, good. I'm, I'm I'm a laid back guy, but you know, when when it's time. Yeah, but I think okay. On. One of the things, one of the reasons I wanted to even you know definitely have you on it is because we got. You know, I came through the studio, like, yo, Che, you gotta hear my project. You play this project, and and the shit is so well done, so ultra prepared. I ain't even, I can't even speak on how prepared you were, like in terms of like videos and concepts and and the whole theme. So, you, give me the inspiration behind just okay. I'm, I'm I'm in artist mode, and then you know why? Well, why Tokyo? Why Tokyo? Why Tokyo? Well, for one, everybody needs to figure out how to get some me time. And it could be five minutes away from your house, 20 minutes away from your house, three hours away from your house. I decided to go there and ended up there. So I was going, with the, fl- I was, I was going with the flow and I ended up there it's magically. And had while you, I was, Had you been before? No, no, no. First time. Okay. And, um... And back to what I'm saying, like, what about my people in, like, my people in Atlanta and just everywhere? Like, I just wanted to, I just wanted to show them from my point of view what I was going through. Could you get to hear it? I feel like it's like a, it's like a 4D experience. That's what the, that's what the art show is going to be like. For this whole Tokyo experience, it's going to be like a 4D thing. You're going to be able to hear, are you hear? Yeah. You're going to taste that shit. We're going to have food. All that. You, I just want you to get the full, Sense, the full, the, 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 all the, everything from, yeah from my experience but um and I went through love shit from back and forth on the phone there just that real shit free like it's it's so many different feelings I felt out there and I wanted to figure out a way to express it because I don't really I'm not the best talker or speaker either so and it's very easy to do it through music for me to communicate I could say it's so crazy I could look people my loved ones in the face would be at like Thanksgiving dinner or something and I'll be quiet and won't say nothing. But I could tell the craziest story on the song, bro. That shit is weird to me. But that to me that is what is music crazy. is about. Yeah, That's bro. what music is about. I was just talking to an artist. She's in the room, so I'm not going to shout her out. But well, I shout out to Rem. She's in the room. But I just literally was talking to her about that. The thing, crazy thing to me about music is you can be you can be creative, you can make shit up, you can express, you know, you can be true from, come, come from mm-hmm. you, but also it could be someone else's story, right. something you overheard, or it could be something you just straight out of your imagination. Mm-hmm. I think that's amazing in terms of being able to just communicate. You know what I mean? So that's beautiful. Um you so, smoking? Nah, I'm good, I'm all good. Right. I'm gonna smoke, I'm gonna drink, I'm gonna smoke on this Japanese whiskey. All right, all right. But, um, all right, so now, now you're in artist mode. So, it's like starting again a little bit, you know what I mean, to some extent, because you had a certain amount of, you know, traction and production as a um, as a producer. So now, how do you how do you how do you build the fan base as a as a solo artist? It's almost back to square one a little bit. Too, yeah, you know it is mean? back to it is back to square one. I feel like I'm a brand I'm a brand new artist, bro. Like, yeah, I always had all these songs in my head, all these raps in my head. Sometimes I'll put it out somehow, but. It's just, I don't know. It's just always been there, and it's time. Like, I just felt like it's time, and okay. I just needed to get it out. I just needed get to, to get it out. But it yeah. doesn't. The di- the difference is now between now and other times. I I tried and attempted, and I would not. I'm not even gonna say tried or attempted. It's really just art. I'm making like, yeah. 
I'm, re- I'm, I'm. It's really like I be painting, bro. No, okay, like yeah. no cap, bro. Like for real. But it's, and, it's prolific. How do you think that? To me, I've never heard. I mean, you know, there's a lot of like in terms of the newer generation, younger generation, right? There's a lot of artists that put out a lot of content, but we know there's a lot of bullshit in that, right? Right. right. How do you? Because one thing I will say, you played me a lot of music, and the caliber. It's like you're prolific in the output, right? You got you got files ready, you got joints ready, you got projects ready, full projects done. But the caliber is so high. How do you keep your quality so high? You know what I'm saying? Because to me, one of the biggest issues going on with music right now is the music quality is suffering. You know, the right. quantity is there, right. but the quality's not. I mean, the thing on quality... Quality is what is really what you you've been taught. Really, like you only know as much. You only know as much as you know. Shit, yeah. like <laughs> so you only like, know you only know that that's what yeah, you do. Yeah, man. Everybody's everybody everybody's cap is different, and I mean, I don't know. I feel, so how do you help these motherfuckers that need to level up? <laughs> nah, but no, no, no. But nah. I, I'm not saying in dis in a disrespectful way. Everybody on everybody on a different level. You really, it's all about really catching that vibration. That air, mm-hmm. it's really catching that vibration in time. Like and what speaks to you? And what's yeah, and what speaks to you? But everybody can get on the same wave. Everybody can like. Yeah. Every it's it's so possible and it's beautiful when it does happen. Like yeah. now. It's really important for me to understand, like, okay, you come from Atlanta, but how come you able to diversify your sound so much? Now, I done heard house influence joints. I done heard African influence joints. I done heard straight trap shit. But I also heard, like, West Coast flavors, right. this and that. And and it still sounds 100% authentic you. Right. How are you able to do that coming from Atlanta? That's coming from, talent. Coming, no, coming, from, coming from Atlanta and having, like, older siblings... And my par- my and my parents were like were a little older too, so it's like. Were your parents into music? Yeah, they didn't make music. My uh, I had my uncle was at my dad used to manage my uncle. He was a big artist in West Africa actually. In, oh, okay. Uh, what was that the eighties? Yeah, I think that was, yeah that was the eighties. He was a pretty big artist out there. Okay. And um yeah he made he made some fine music. I actually sampled one of his songs in some in some new shit um on the Tokyo project, but um. That's fine. Yeah, my my dad always listened to fucking everything, bro. My dad listened to them, to listen to Led Zeppelin. Oh, everything, like really everything. Yeah. I used to be like, now that I, now that I'm older, and because I, I never talked to him about the records actually, because he just had them out. They just always mm-hmm. been there. I never talked to him about. it. I'm like, this nigga was listening to Led Zeppelin, <laughs> bro. Now that I think about it, I'm like, oh shit, he fire. Yeah, your pops was to smoke weed. And, oh yeah, he did. He was crazy. Look, let me tell you some funny my shit. My pops smoke weed too. About my about my pops, he used to smoke weed. When I was little, my they used to hide it, bro. Yeah, I used to same be like, here. Same I used to be like, why your eyes so red? He's like, cause we African. <laughs> so my like, pops what? always smelled the so same. So I way. used to be like, oh, I guess when I get older, my, my eyes, eyes are gonna be, be red. red. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my pops used to always smell a certain way. So you know, I mean, I used to be like, oh, that's just his cologne. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, and my aunt used to just laugh. Yeah, she'd be like, yeah, that's just cologne, all right. <laughs> Funny shit about my mom. My uncle gave it away on my mom. We was at a family reunion one time. And um, I don't know where I was at. I just pulled up. I was going to get some food or something. My uncle was like, yo, mama over there smoking weed. <laughs> I'm like, you lying. Shut up. And where, where, where's your mom from? She's from Cincinnati. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she, I, she's, yeah, yeah, okay, that's the she's connection. She's from Cincinnati. Gotcha. And my dad from Liberia. So, yeah, that was all right. <laughs> now, one of the things is, you know, Two Chains is a friend of mine. He's a friend of yours. One of the things I talked to Chains about before, he really talked about how just growing up in Atlanta influenced him. You know what I mean? Everything that he saw, everything he experienced, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? How do you feel about that? Because I spent time in Atlanta. When I was in college up in Virginia. We used to go down to Atlanta. Um, I went to Biggie, Biggie's first show at the warehouse when Biggie they just only had party and That's bullshit. Hard. Yeah, I knew all all the Atlanta like thugs and gangsters. It was wild, like Atlanta. But mm-hmm. but but there was a culture to it. Like I met Big Boy from Outcast. He took me to uh, one twelve, and it was an eight ball and MJG show, right? And to me, just being a witness of that, I was mm. just like in awe of this the culture and just you know what I mean like, I, I ain't know a word of the song. The whole club knew the song, <laughs> right? So how did you feel like growing up in Atlanta influenced you? Atlanta is. I'm so happy that I was 
I was able to live in Atlanta like my whole life because the inspiration there is amazing, bro. Like from Kilo Ali to DJ Smurf, who wow. is DJ Smurf is DJ Collar Park. Yeah. So, but like all those early, all the '90s shit was amazing. It didn't really get highlighted everywhere. Yeah. It was really just down there, but like the music was amazing. The beats, the way the eight oh eights. Yeah. Where did you wow. hang out at? What, they, when I was me some of the spots, like when you was coming up, but like when you could go out, when you was old. Oh, enough when to... I first, when I was first, first, first able to go out, prime time. Okay. It was on the east side. R.I.P. The Mama's Prime Time. That's what the club was called, bruh. And I was from the north side, so that was. So we used to go. So we used to go to the um, east side to go to prime time, and it just used to be amazing. Just all the music because they would play. <laughs> We had like a crazy high school scene with rap, like really, yeah, like this music didn't make it out, but the whole I wouldn't, I maybe Georgia, I would say Georgia know these songs though, and it was like from like the east side of it, from the east side of from Atlanta was making these songs, the west side, to, really the whole Atlanta was making it. it was crazy, it was funny. Twenty One Savage manager used to make. He had one of those songs in high school. It was called like the Roosevelt or something. Really? Yeah, Soldier Boy stole that shit too. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. but I'm just saying, yeah. like that shit run like. And it's just a local. The, the culture of Atlanta is just we, we Atlanta always fucked with Atlanta, bro. Like everybody's real cool and fuck with each other. It's the most amazing thing. And I didn't figure that out until I started traveling. Yeah, see, I figured that out one time when I came down, and this is before I had ever heard of Future, right? And all over the radio. I ain't hear nothing but future. But outside of Atlanta, I ain't never heard of future. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, who's this nigga future that GOAT, man? Yeah, like yeah. they playing all over the radio in Atlanta. And that's when I really realized something that was different in in the pulse of Atlanta, where they the so local support. You yeah. know what I mean? The only person real I, local the, support, yeah, bro. Real, support, real local support, you know, bro. Outside of Red Alert and like other Funk places, Flex. Yeah. Other places York. be hating nah, on they, each other. It'd be the craziest shit. How you gonna lot let the local I was, I was in the city somewhere. I forgot where I was at. I, I gotta remember. But anyway, we was in a car with these girls. They was talking about an artist from their city. I had never heard of him. I'm like, yo, why you talking about him like that? Yo, he from your city. You supposed to talk when you around other people. Be like, yo, that nigga fire, but like, when you get up to somewhere yeah. else, say that shit. Yeah. Bro, I'm telling you, like, Atlanta really fuck with each other. Yeah. Like, the only other place that I really yeah. know, like, I mean, I guess maybe, you know, in, in certain spots probably, but the Bay, yeah, when, when yeah. I'm in the Bay, they go hard for the, they, they go hard for their, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then the other place is Houston. Yeah. So Houston go hard right. for theirs too. But Atlanta for sure, like you know what I mean. Maybe maybe Tennessee too. And yeah, Tennessee. yeah, Florida too. Florida, Florida oh, yeah, folks right. coming together. Yeah, Even the right. kids, they just had a little run. They, I mean, they still on the run, going yeah. crazy, pumping all them yeah. smoke purple, all mm-hmm. them. Yeah, they, they well, still um, doing their thing. You know, but what yeah, I mean? like New, look, let me tell you crazy shit about New York. Like a couple times when I went to New York, I made a beat with the Heat Makers. They was like, they literally said, "Bro, you you're the first people we are, first person we ever collabed on the beat with." And I'm like, huh? That's crazy. What you mean, bro? All these five people y'all used to be with, the like, coach is just different, Blaze, right? Kanye, all that, and y'all ain't never made a beat. And he was like, nah, we just didn't think about it like that. We was like, yeah, but, it really ain't. It really ain't. They ain't got the same sense of collaboration as y'all got. Yeah. I was talking to TK about that one day. You know what I mean? He was like, yo, in Tennessee, like, you know, this is just this way we came up. Yeah. It was just like, oh, yo, you got Beagle? Oh, let me put the kick on. Let me, you yeah, know, yeah, that's fine. yeah, just, you know, coming yeah, in the room. And I think that's that's great. And I think that's, you know, how you, cre- you know, you collaborate. And I think that's why you and Trav really rock. Because I, I noticed that <coughs> with Trav bringing people together. Now, I'm not going to talk your ear off, but I want to, in conclusion, and then you're on your solo mission, you're building your fan base, you're traveling. What's next? What's, what's, give me, give me, first of all, give me a day in the life right now. What's a day in the life look like? A day in the life. I wake up. If I don't wake up in the studio, which I probably do wake up in the studio, I wake up, kiss my son. Okay. You know what I mean? Put on, do that. put on some fly shit. Jump into the IROC. Head to the studio. Shout cook some shit I-Rock. up. Yeah, shout out to the IROC. Cook some shit up. Add to the board. To the shit, you know what I mean? Cause I'm everything I write down. That shit is for real. Okay, that shit is for real. Cause you got I gotta the board, see it. You got the yeah. board with the plan on it. You the gotta board. see it. Yeah, man. For everyone um, who you know who ain't understanding that, 
get your whiteboards up, get whatever it is, your board, your mood boards, get your plan, really put your plan together. Put some thought into what you're doing. My bad, keep going. Yeah, man. And um shit after that. Write some more shit on the board, cause see my plan. I'm coming, I'm going for the number one spot. I really want I really want to make Okay. I want to make everybody like amazing music. Like I, re- like I really want. Like yeah. I don't know if this makes sense, but like I really want to. Like, yeah. And I know it's not even. I don't. I don't know if, if I'm supposed to thinking about it. Think about it like that. But I really want to make people like happy, bro. Like with okay. music, bro. Like I really do. Okay. Like, yeah. I don't know if that makes sense, but no, I, I, I just want to be I, like. I, I, I believe. And I just want to keep doing it. Yeah, I believe. I want to keep possible. making. I want to make like. I believe I that's hit, possible. I, all right, let me. Maybe I'm running out of words. I want to hit. I want to hit different emotions in people, bro. Hit that spirit. I want to hit different emotions in people and see if they were feeling what I was feeling. Yeah. Because when those things do connect, it's amazing. I do believe that music it's can amazing. heal. Yeah, I believe music can heal. Music can inspire. Oh, I mean, music can save lives. Wait, no, mu- music does. Yo, music can heal. Let me. My my dad was just sick. Actually, he's good now though. Okay, shout out to pops. Yeah, but um. He wasn't doing anything, and he didn't he didn't have his music, and all that shit was like too far away. So we had to get all his records and like bring him closer and get him like a vinyl, his vinyl Set shit, up. and have it close to him and put on some like nice speakers and turn that shit up loud. He's straight now, bro. And I feel like if we did if we didn't do that, I don't think that would have happened. Yeah, like that. I, I I truly believe like that. that one simple thing. Like yeah. I'm not saying other stuff. I know other stuff saved it too, but I like if we didn't do that, I don't think it would have happened. Like music, music is a spirit. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, people I, overlook it, man. You gotta, you gotta use that shit for, yeah, what, for what it went, is. I just went to Quincy and Friends. He had a jam session, and Quincy's there, 86 years old, and in the, in the in the audience, just 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 vibing. You know mm-hmm. what I mean, it's crazy. 86 years old, you know, just still feeling it. You know what I mean? So I definitely believe music. You know, yeah. is, is is one of those things. Now. Where do you want to see yourself one year from now? One year from now. So November 2020. I just want to feel like velvet. I want to feel like velvet, bro. Good answer. I want to feel like velvet. For those when you hear the project, that'll all make sense. I want to feel like velvet, bro. You hear I want everybody else to feel like velvet too, bro. Cause velvet feels nice. Yeah, velvet feels amazing, bro. I want everybody to feel that, bro. That's good. And and as we wrap up in conclusion, what would be your advice to an up and coming artist? Cause to me, the game changes every year. Game is different every year. If you're an artist in 2019 going to 2020, what would be your advice to that young artist who's just aspiring? They, you know, cause to be it's the funny thing about the music game to me. As much as there's information on the internet and this and that. The, like that's why the, that's why this podcast exists. Q and A with Che, because these are the questions that Google can't answer. You can't Google, damn. If I'm an artist in 2019, 2020, you can't Google. Let me get some game from first. So game. So first, give him some game. Hey man, I don't even know if this is game, but this is this is this is this is what I this is what I say. Find one or two people that you really fuck with, that you really really fuck with. One of them got to be smart as fuck. The other one don't have to be smart as fuck. He just got to know how to get shit done. He or she had to know how to get shit done. Find those two people in your life. Good answer. Find those two people in your life. And execute from there. And stick with them. It's going to get crazy. People going to try to break y'all up. Oh, yep. They going to try to jump in and try to break y'all <laughs> They're up. They going to try to infiltrate. They going to jump in and try to infiltrate. The spies. Don't let it happen. Just stick together, ride that shit out. Sometimes you, sometimes you're just gonna have to have a conversation and be like, "We're gonna have to break this down this way." But look, man, ride, ride, ride sometimes with your you're folks, have to bro. Go take that walk and have to talk mm-hmm. some shit out. You know, that's just gonna happen. Ride with your folks. Another thing. Another thing. Fuck everybody, bro. <laughs> and but I mean that in a good way, and pass it to yourself sometimes, like. You got to turn in the Kobe. You got to turn in the Jordan, bro. To get where you really want to go, to where you really, really want to go. I don't know if that shit is high or low, but where you, if you if it's high, the place you really want to go, you got to turn in the Jordan and Kobe. You got to pass that shit to yourself, bro. You got to pass it to yourself, bro. You got to yeah. 
You got, you know, it took me a long time to learn that lesson. You got to be selfish sometimes. Yeah, bro. You know what I mean? But it's true, though. Yeah, you really do. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But and that goes, but at the at the end of that, that goes back to having two people that you at least one or two people you really fuck with, and y'all could take it. Y'all could take that ship all the way. Build your own ship. That now nah, that fuck. Forget what I said. Build your own ship, bro. That's fire. build your own ship, bro. That's fire. Get your know. You on. can have a whole. You can have a whole bunch of people selling with you, riding with you. But I'm saying, build your own ship. Just like build your ship with some five people, with yeah. smart people. Bro. I think that's a, that's a, that's that's great advice. Yeah. All right, and, and don't jump ship. <laughs> don't jump ship. No Takashi's. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I had to give my little Kanye on that one. Um, <laughs> shout out to Jesus. <laughs> now, nah, let me stop. Let me stop. Um, with that said, I thank you so much. I was much. just with Jesus in Brazil. You know, we was with the, with the thing. Yeah, know? that's the real one. That's the real one. You know what I mean? do talking to bro. Yeah. yeah. You got to talk to him, right? Yeah, I, I, I talked to bro. I, was telling him. I had some questions for him, actually. I yeah. was like, but well, now nah, we're going to get in that. Right there. Nah, but you know, I'm, part you know, two. I think we both spiritual now. We could build on that. Exactly. That could be that could be the Korean edition. Yeah. Cause we're gonna do, we're gonna go to Korea and record. So anyway. Let's do it. All right. In conclusion, I thank you for joining us. Q and A Q&A with Che. It was yeah. it was a most enjoyable journey through the the life and times of FKI first. Look out for that Tokyo project. That shit is fire. Look out for Good Gas Tokyo, Good Gas Rio. Man, my man is up to something. For real. Peace. Hey. Thank you. Salute. Yeah, we on this Japanese whiskey, you know, coincident. That's this real, it's authentic. We didn't just do this because he's got a Tokyo project. This is what we really